Well, we're fixing a problem we had on the baler during the season. So this is our net wrap drive belt. And on this 567, it has these little, oh, clips that go in behind here. They go in behind here and they hold that shield on. And the clips break, well, they rust out. Well, they're a pain to put in. So what I'm doing is I'm putting push nuts in, like you can see there. And I drilled the hole out to make it a little bigger to get the push nuts in, uh, just a little bit bigger. And then here's, here's my tool I came up with. So what you do here is you put that in there. You got the push nut goes in the hole. And then you got a, put a wrench here. And then you also put a wrench and turn this. And basically this plate is so you can hold it and then that nut is pushing against this plate, which expands this. See them little threads on there? Or them little teeth or whatever you want to call them? That'll expand and crimp and keep that in there. So that way, you can put your shield and your bolt on. And it works pretty good. So, I think this 567... They have these, I think on 568 and up, they changed it for the net wrap drive for that cover. So, all right, we all are all back together. Got uh, new bolts in there. Uh, another reason why I did this instead of just putting these clips back in, uh, those tend to rust on here. And then if you gotta take your bolts off to replace your net wrap drive belt, or if you need to do any work with a roller, uh, they'll just tend to break off like they did here and then they spin. So I just got put the push nuts rivets in there and new bolts and we should be ready to go. Well, this is always the fun part, laying on the ground, putting pickup teeth in on my baler. We got, uh, we got a few to do here. We got uh, some broken ones and we got some bent ones. A lot of times the bent ones it's just nice to replace. You can tell how, you can tell the difference here. And then the bent ones usually just go around and they get caught in these shields here and break off. But some of you guys may joke and say my Baylor pickup looks like a jack-o'-lantern because it's missing so many teeth, but we're getting her fixed up. And I don't want you Vermeer guys laughing at me about your rubber mounted teeth and you got 3,000 bales on your baler and you haven't had to replace a tooth. But nope, just uh, going through, checking everything, getting all new teeth put in, seeing which ones need to be fixed and fixing them up, so yeah. All right, so what are we doing now, you might ask? We got the belts out, the baler's open, looks like chaos. All right, well, Anytime you got this open, you're working underneath of it. Just make sure you lock that. It's unlock, lock. We're locked and ready to roll. So a lot of times every year, what I like to do, when I get done bailing, or like right now, right before bailing starts, take all the belts out, and I like to spin all my rollers. So on the tension arm, you know, spin all the rollers, cut any net wrap. The top roller, it tends to, when you make oversized bales, or get net wrap up there gets a lot of net wrap up there and you don't want a bunch of net wrap between your rollers and your bearings and stuff so um yeah just kind of spinning rollers making sure everything looks good uh, another thing why i take the belts out is i like to so i got all my belts laying over here there's eight total you got four longs and four shorts it's nice to kind of take a look see how your splice is looking everything and then also, I like to replace, always like to replace my pins. So here, okay, this is a pin that is not broke. Um, this is one year, so you can tell it's got some good pull there. This is a this is a pin was replaced. Also, it was broke one year ago, and this is a new one, brand new. So you can kind of tell a little bit of wear, not so much wear. As cheap as these are, it is nice to just go ahead and replace them every year. You don't necessarily really need to take your belts out to do it, but I take my belts out just so I can get a good 
kind of look over on the baler. So that's about it. We'll spin rollers around and make sure everything spins freely and go from there. So if you're ever wondering how to calibrate your bale size on a 567 John Deere on this older, uh, press while you're holding the John Deere, hold your, turn your twine button on or your net wrap and then go to channel five. So there we're at channel five and see how it's beeping continuously at 208. So we'll just take it off so that way it's not beeping the whole time. But channel five and 208, it's what you want to do. And then what you do is you come over here to your bale size sensor and you gotta get your tension arm. You gotta get your hole in the, in the middle of that circle there. And then you gotta take these bolts loose and twist that sensor. It's really touchy. And then once you get it, you gotta tighten it up. It works best if you got somebody in the cab watching it, telling you which way to go. But just uh, haven't seen much out there on this, so thought it'd be nice so you guys know. together and should be ready to go belts are all in check the chains over put new pickup teeth in and as far as the tractor goes i got that all serviced i didn't get any of that filmed but we should be bailing here pretty soon uh and we'll be able to check her out so thanks for watching and like comment rate subscribe thank you very much <laughs>